Welcome to Bulk Reef Supply. This is a video demonstration of our activated carbon. This video will discuss the different types of carbon, benefits of each, what is required of an aquarium carbon, and a demonstration of how they work. At first glance, most carbons look very similar, which can lead to the idea that they're all going to perform pretty much the same. This really couldn't be further from the truth. Different carbons will perform drastically different depending on what they're made of, how they're activated, and size and shape. Most retail aquarium carbon is made from bituminous coal due to its low material costs and dust content. Carbon can also be made from lignite coal, coconut shells, peat, wood, and even be blended. The performance of the carbon is going to be largely dependent on the pore size and how closely it matches the contaminant you're trying to remove. While carbon may not look like much, under an electron microscope, you can see it is really a network of tiny pores. It is these pores that capture all of the contaminants. Each type of carbon is known for having different size pores. For example, bituminous carbon is known for having mostly tiny little pores with a few big ones, which results in a very large surface area. Where lignite carbon is known for having almost all large pores. Each one is going to be more efficient at removing different things. For example, most pesticides typically have a small molecule size and will be best removed with a small pore carbon because of the increased surface area. In the aquarium, we are typically looking to remove larger molecule dissolved organics like color pigments or other tank contaminants. This means a larger pore size carbon like our lignite or ROX is going to be the most efficient for aquarium use. In this demonstration, we're going to use standard carbon tests to determine the volume of both large and medium sized pores. The molasses efficiency test is generally thought of as a carbon's ability to remove color pigments and a measurement of the large pore volume. The test is done by adding black strap molasses to heated water and then testing for clarity after a fixed amount of time. At the same time, we're going to run what's known as the methylene blue test which is a measurement of a carbon's ability to remove medium-sized molecules. The test is also done by adding the methylene blue to the water and then testing for clarity after a fixed amount of time. The quantity of medium molecules is a bit less important than the large, but is good to know. In this test, we've filled all four chambers with the exact same amount of molasses as well as methylene blue. In the first chamber, we have a large bituminous pellet, which is pretty common in the aquarium industry. The second chamber has a bituminous granule, which is also very common. Then we have the lignite carbon, and lastly, our premium ROX. Each chamber has a BRS reactor in the back with 200 grams of carbon. The complete test was 12 hours, and we time-lapsed it down for this video. The first portion that you're watching now represents about an hour's time. You'll notice that the large bituminous pellets perform very poorly. The bituminous granules perform really well at removing the medium-sized blue molecules, but the green color suggests that much of the yellow larger molecules are still there. It looks as though the lignite carbon has removed most of the larger yellow molecules, but is now working on the medium-sized blue molecules. At the end of the hour, the ROX has now basically removed all of the medium and large molecules. For this demonstration, we wanted to test if the ROX is actually capable of removing more contaminants, or is it just removing it faster? We went ahead and doubled the amount of molasses and methylene blue in Chamber 4 to see how it would perform while the others are working on their original set of contaminants. The rest of this is the other 11 hours shrunk down to a matter of seconds. As you can see, it only took a couple of hours for the ROX to not only catch up, but pass the other samples. In the end, the large bituminous pellets will have removed most of the medium-sized molecules, but barely put a dent in the large. The bituminous granules was able to remove all of the medium-sized molecules, as well as a majority of the large size. However, after 12 hours, it seems to have hit capacity and unable to remove the rest. Lignite carbon was able to remove all of the large molecules, but judging by the small blue tint, still had a few of the medium-sized molecules left over. It has also seemed to reach capacity at 12 hours. The ROX is now crystal clear and indistinguishable from the reverse osmosis deionized water that we started with. So not only did it remove twice as many contaminants, 
but it still outperformed the other samples. It's time to answer the all important question, which carbon should I buy? We will recommend the ROX 0.8 every time because the performance, low dust, easy rinsing, and ultra low extractables make it the best value. However, there are some times the tiny pellets may not work well in your equipment or purchasing the most affordable option is preferable. The lignite carbon is going to outperform the bituminous granules. However, it has a lot more dust and requires significantly more rinsing. While it can be used in a filter bag, we find it is best used in a reactor where it is really easy to flush the fines out and the ease of rinsing becomes really unimportant. The bituminous granules are really common in the aquarium industry because the low dust content results in an easy to rinse, user friendly product. The large particles can be used in pretty much any reactor, canister, or filter bag. For many, these benefits will outweigh the lower effectiveness. Please note that we use a special grade of bituminous carbon known for having a larger than average pore size, so there is a high likelihood it will outperform the retail carbon you were using before. Unless your system absolutely requires it, we don't recommend using the large bituminous pellets. The large size and shape is really inefficient in fluids and designed for removing impurities from air. We stock it primarily for removing ozone from systems that utilize it. Lastly, there are many ways to utilize activated carbon in the aquarium. However, using a canister filter or reactor like this one, where the water is actually forced through the bed of carbon, is going to be incredibly more efficient. You can use much less carbon and receive the same results as a filter bag, which means it will pay for itself very quickly.